out here digging a little, I think this is a 12,000 square foot building. It's going to have overhead cranes in it, so they got some heavy footings in the middle. And we're going to see how she goes today. Uh, I don't know if we'll get it all done. We'll probably get a pretty good chunk of it done. The problem I got is it takes a while to dig those spot footings when you got an 18 inch ditch and unless you're swapping buckets back and forth which that turns out to be more time consuming sometimes than it is just to punch it out with a bucket someday i'm gonna get a bucket cupper um i think maybe i don't know i'd like to if i can find a good one it's hydraulic i don't want to have to have one that I mean, if I have to get out of the cab to change it, it really doesn't do me any good. I'd rather have a hydraulic set up. I think Miller may make one. I don't know if there's some other brands out there. The, the, that's one of the oddities with New Holland is uh, not a lot of people use them in the U.S. They're more overseas. So trying to run into issues with not as many people handle the cuppers for them. They probably do overseas and other places. But, uh, New Holland just, you know, people see a New Holland, they think, well, that's just the homeowner's version of a backhoe or whatever. And that's okay. It keeps the price down on them for me, so... What you want about them, I don't really care. Uh, I know what I know what's good. <laughs> There's a reason I'm sitting in one. Uh, if it broke down all the time, I'd probably have something different. Or a new one. I'd have a new one probably. A new ones break down all the time, so I don't know that it matters what brand you buy now. It's They've got all that high-tech crap on them. And I don't want one like it. Uh, I, I don't see that it would benefit my company at all to have a backhoe that is less reliable than the old one. So that's where I stand on the issue. And, well, this one here is getting a lot of hours on it, but I've got uh, spare parts. I've got, you know, I've got the ability to fix it pretty easy. Anyway, we're, uh, Thirteen thousand four hundred hours today. Four eighteen, actually. So did a little bit of work with it last week. A couple of footing jobs. Um, used the dozer a little bit last week. TDA. And my goal in life is not to work harder and, and more jobs. It's to figure out how to make things work the way they are. Uh, I don't mind taking a day or two off a week. It's okay. It gives me time to fix stuff and keep things going. Now, I know guys that run pretty hard seven days a week and I, I've done that. And by the time you're done with all of it, it doesn't seem like you really gained a whole lot. Because you're having to have, you know, 
outside support a lot more. So, to me, a slower pace where you can handle your own stuff and take care of business too, it, it saves you money or saves me money. I mean, I look at shop time as I'm making money. I'm making I'm making money in the shop when I'm working on my equipment. I'm actually, you know, I could look at it that I'm making 100 bucks an hour in the shop because 110 or 120 is about where the shops are at. Some of them are higher than that. So if I spend eight hours working on something in the shop and I fix it myself, then I can look at that as money made, not money spent. So. A lot of guys don't understand that. They think you got to be out turning dirt over to make money, and it's you know there's more there's more to it than that. It's probably one of the hardest ways to make a living is moving dirt. I think I don't know. There's guys that think they got it figured out, and they they make it look pretty easy. And, and in certain markets, you know, it works different. I'm not trying to be an expert on anything. I just, I kind of stay in my own, you know, I do, I do my own deal. And I absolutely probably wouldn't encourage anybody to follow her and do what I do because there's easier ways to make money. Granted, sitting in this backhoe, Digging a footing is the easiest thing I can do today. There's nothing hard about this. I mean, outside of having a breakdown or something like that, if that were to happen, I mean, this is just about as easy a work as I could do. So, an old man can do it. I know operators that worked up into their 80s and 90s still going and they still like it they still do they love what they do getting ready to put some rebar in and uh, we're going to change buckets. I think we've got one more to dig. I started right at 8 o'clock digging that first one down there so and it's 8.32 so that's about how long it takes to dig uh, three of them about 10 minutes a piece. That's kind of a Kind of an average time on spot footings, 10 to 15 minutes a piece. I probably wouldn't have to turn and dig this side out, but it makes them look a lot cleaner. It only takes about well a minute. Actually, I've went over my 10 minutes. I'm, I'm probably about 11 minutes because it's 8.33 now. So, I did stop for a minute and text somebody. Well, that threw me off. Anyway, that's about all I know today. Um, working down in Oklahoma City. Need to wash my window.
We're back out here for day two. Just got the back row full of fuel and we're gonna go dig some more footings over here. Trashy stuff under the top here, in the dirt. It's kind of a, uh, I think they lime stabilized it or something. It's not a very, they didn't do a very good job of it, but they, they did put lime on it. So there are some hard spots. It's a nice morning. Wind's not blowing. It's not cold. It's about 60 degrees, I think, yeah. Something like that. It'll be a good day. Just, uh... Yeah, you can see there's some of that stabilized soil it, it gets pretty hard it comes out in chunks but underneath it it's not a very thick layer and underneath it it's just sticky on black dirt digging neat anyway it's about all I know today
me much either. Thank you. 